Welcome to Cooking with Glenn and Katie. I've got a special guest this week, Chuck Sapko. We're best friends and uh, we kind of live pretty far distance from each other. I live in Charlotte, he lives in Tampa, so we decided to meet at Hilton Head Island about halfway in between to uh, in enjoy some time together. Chuck, tell us what you plan on doing. People we entertain for our friends expect good food when they come to our house and they like a, a variety of good food. So what we do to help make that happen is we use charcuterie boards and we do different things on different charcuterie boards. I mean, if you're having a very, very small event, you can do one board and maybe just have a cheese and crackers and peanuts and things of that nature, but you can certainly use them to put other things on. The first thing I'm gonna do though, is to prepare chocolate covered strawberries, chocolate covered apricots, and even chocolate covered pretzels. So Chuck, let's get started. Let's go. We are at Hilton Head, so we can only bring so much with us when we come. And so I brought some things, but then when we get here, we didn't bring, have everything. So we just made do with what we have. So with the boards, I have, uh, my first board that I used, which was the old cheese board, um, on the back side, it's kind of yucky, but on this side, it's pretty. I went to a friend's Christmas party and they had a wonderful spread of food on a board and they told me, Glenn, this is a charcuterie board and I, all year I've been working on how to do that, how to design. So this was my first board and this one right here is a perfect size if you've got company over two to four people, you can put food on here and have a good, uh, some good snacks. But you don't have to have that. You look at what you got in your house. Like I had that cheese board. This is another board. Uh, now this is one I bought. This is my charcuterie board that I bought. It's got little areas uh, for crackers. You've got this area you can put food or you can flip it over and you just have a, a big surface. And this is a bamboo board and they're not that expensive. But I also went and bought a three pack of bamboo boards. And the three packs, was on, it was only like $12, 10 or $12. So it's not expensive. So I have this size board here. They're just flat boards, this one and this little one. This is kind of like if I want to do something for myself and sit out and, and, and read a book or something. But when we got here, uh, we saw what, what we had they had a tray like this. And so if you have a tray at your house, you can use it for a charcuterie board. I've asked Chuck to design a party table and he's gonna start with the strawberries and then we're gonna add on and add on. And we don't have all the, now he's got a lot of Christmas stuff at his house. I've got a lot at my house, and but we left it at home. And so uh, we're gonna have a festive board, but you can better believe if it was at our houses, it have a little bit more pizzazz, a little bit more design to it. But Chuck really surprised me when he came. He knew that I wanted him to do a charcuterie board. What he didn't say is that his daughter, Lori, and his son-in-law, Wes, made them a charcuterie board. And for a surprise, he asked them to make me one. So look, look at this. This is beautiful. It's heavy, it's oak. Oak is my favorite wood. And I can't wait to see what Chuck does with it. But when I get these boards, I make sure that they're safe. If you've got a cutting board, it's safe because they won't make a cutting board with toxic stuff on it. What you do is you put a little bit of mineral oil on a rag and you rub it. On, I rub it on one side and the side and I put on a glass and let it sit overnight and then I rub it off and sometimes I put another coat on it, then I flip it over and do the same thing. And once you've got them oiled, and I've oiled all these boards, and I know that uh, Lori and Wes oiled this one, after about 10 uses, or you can kind of tell, you'll want to do it again. This is certainly something you can use for a special occasion. Everyone seems to like chocolate, and most people like also like fruit. Um, I've gathered some wonderful strawberries and they've also gotten some fresh uh, pineapple along with some dried apricots 
and also some pretzel sticks. And I'll tell you, pretzel sticks are certainly something nice that the kids like. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my favorite chocolate, which is Giardelli. I personally like the dark chocolate. It also comes in the milk chocolate. And I like to dip everything in this dark chocolate first. Best thing to do is read the instructions on the back. Make sure you do not overheat it in the microwave because you will destroy it. Okay. This is kind of the consistency you're gonna be looking for after it comes out of the microwave. And it might take a few times to get it this way, but just make sure you don't overcook it. You wanna, just again, you wanna stir it. You just wanna make sure there's no chunks of chocolate in there. You want it nice and creamy. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do then is, I guess, start with your strawberries. What I like to do is come approximately three quarters up on the strawberry because at some point later on, I may decide that I wanna double dip these. And what I mean by that is I'll start with the chocolate, let it set, let it cool off for a while, and take these same strawberries and take them back into white chocolate and maybe go about a third up from the bottom. It makes nice presentation and it makes them taste actually better too. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna dip it. We're gonna let it drip off, give it a twist, and set it right there on the uh, parchment paper, wax paper, anyone, anything like that would actually be great. If you've got a cookie sheet that you can put the wax paper or parchment paper on, great way to just line them up and go on, go on down the line with them. It's always nice to have medium to large size strawberries because again, the small ones are gonna still taste good, but when you're doing a presentation or you're giving it a gift, um, uh, presentation makes a big difference. It creates a wow factor. So what I'm going to do next is get a couple of these fresh pineapple chunks. This pineapple happened to be extremely sweet. We were kind of, again, lucky there. This is something that you can do and still take somewhere and feel good about it. Now I'm going to take one of these apricots, these dried apricots, I'm gonna dip it in the chocolate, just like I did the strawberry, maybe come about half to three quarters ways up the apricot. Again, these are just kind of bite-sized items, but the chocolate with the apricot is, is amazing. And again, it gives you additional color and additional look. I'm gonna grab a few of these pretzel sticks. In many cases, you can find the shorter pretzel, pretzel sticks like this, however, we weren't able to find them today, so we had to get the foot long ones and then cut part of them off. But it still works. The end that's cut is going to be covered by the chocolate, so it doesn't matter. Again, dip them in the chocolate, try to give it a roll, set it on down, and it's pretty tough to mess up. Can't, it's pretty tough. That, to struggle with. It's very, 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 very easy to do. What I like to do in many cases, if you do have larger strawberries, is once I've put them in the refrigerator to let them set for maybe 10 minutes, what that does, it hardens the chocolate so that when I do attempt to put a second layer of chocolate on, that chocolate will adhere to the dark chocolate without making a mess. My favorite chocolate is Giardelli chocolate. This is the white chocolate. So this is what I'm gonna use as the second layer on these particular strawberries. Okay, I've just pulled this out of the microwave. This is the white chocolate. It'll be perfect uh, for double dipping these uh, eight strawberries that I've set aside. I kept a few strawberries, just dark chocolate, because there are some people that prefer dark chocolate and only dark chocolate. 
So what we're gonna do, again, it's the pretty much the same thing, except you don't wanna cover all the dark chocolate. You wanna go down just about like that. So that gives you a tritone. You've got your red, your dark, dark chocolate, your white chocolate. If you want to put some additional color to it, you should do that while the chocolate is still wet. For a few of them, we'll take this. This is just a uh, red sugar, and I'm just going to sprinkle it on the end. Again, just gives it a little bit more color, a little more festive for a holiday table. Down, give it a twist. Down, give it a twist. Down, give it a twist. We'll add a few sprinkles to these guys here. Again, that's just an extra step that's no big deal. But it, again, it gives color. Honestly, I'm all about presentation. I make a lot of these strawberry boards and give them um, as gifts during the holiday season. Um, I'll take a, a large platter to my, the vet clinic that we take our animals to, the bank, church, just a lot of different things. And people absolutely love chocolate covered strawberries. You can't go wrong. The central prop on the table is this uh, charcuterie board. Um, this is a pretty special charcuterie board. It is multi-tiered, as you can see here. I'm all about tiers. I, I like things on tiers. I like a lot of color. And this is certainly going to help the presentation. The slots are wider or wider here, narrower here for small crackers, a little wider here for Christinis. So we we just got a kind of got a lot going on here. We'll decorate around here with cheeses and different lunch meats and things of that nature that you will see later on in this segment. The ba the other boards on the table are basically going to be supporting actors. They're going to help pull this whole concoction together. There's going, well, we're going to let you just imagine what you might find, okay? You'll be surprised. Here's the finished product of our small chocolate board. We've just placed this uh, tray here. I think that's where it's going to stay, but I'm not positive yet. Once we get all the trays built, then I'll probably shuffle them around again. Maybe it'll take me two or three times to shuffle them around to the way I really want to get the presentation to look. This is colorful. I think it looks inviting, and I think your guests would be pleased. Well, we finally just finished our small holiday table for our upcoming little party. We think we're gonna have enough food because it will be a small party. We're only looking at 10 to 12 people, but something you don't want to do is to have your guests go home hungry. So hopefully they won't be going home hungry after diving into this table. So let me show you how we completed it. We have this large charcuterie board here. And what we've done is we've had some delicious olives, of course, our staple crackers, crostinis, cube cheese, cheddar, and gouda. Cheese balls that absolutely look delicious. We've added some hummus, cashews. The spinach dip, dip is just really incredibly good. Then we come down here and we've got this small board, although we have crammed a lot on it. These fresh figs that are really to die for. And then we've got these pickles that are garlic pickles that were made by Glenn that are incredible. And I've wrapped them in a hard salami 
and then pierce them with a, a small tomato. Over here we've got the melon cantaloupe wrapped in Italian prosciutto. Absolutely incredible also. Now we move down here a little bit further and we've got more meat, again more prosciutto, we've got a hard salami, we've got pepperoni, and they're all wrapped in provolone sticks. So then we could move on to our next board here. I guess it could be part dessert or part really anything you'd want to do with it. And you can't have a party without some sushi, so we did pick up this sushi roll and it looks absolutely delicious. Haven't dove into it yet, but I'm sure we will here shortly. Right here we have uh, a nice little Italian uh, appetizer. It's uh, mozzarella bowls that have been marinated in a nice Italian oil. And then we have drizzled balsamic vinaigrette over the top of them. Makes for a nice color on a table. And also delicious. Here we've got two different kinds of apples and we've added a real thick caramel sauce uh, to be used as a dipping sauce. Real good, and you wanna make sure your apples are nice, fresh, and crisp. We have this, um, what we think is pretty incredible dessert uh, board. We've got homemade cookies that are delicious. We've got several different kinds of cheesecakes, and they are topped off with fresh berries pecan pralines that are just incredible that Glenn made just a little while ago. They are just super. And we have this delicious dark chocolate peppermint bark, along with some sea salt caramel chocolates. That pretty well completes the board. Well, Chuck, that was quite an experience, a learning experience for me. It's a beautiful table that you you made, and wow, those strawberries were outstanding. I, that's my favorite of the three three fruits that you had. Uh, what do you think? Um, I'm pleased with what we had to work with. You, certainly, if we were at one of our homes, we would have had a lot, uh, several more props to be able to use for a, a Christmas table. But unfortunately, being away, we didn't but I think we made the most of it, and it, it did look good. It was a lot of fun. I have a couple books that I found uh, that have given me some ideas. Chuck, he kind of gets his off, out of the top of his head. I need some visuals. Uh, this one, first one is called On Board. Uh, both the books I'm sh sharing with you are under $20 a piece, but inside they've got recipes, and they've got the best part of them, they've got beautiful pictures of charcuterie boards or just boards that you put food on on the table. Probably my very favorite is this one right here. It's beautiful boards. So if you have a choice of the two, I'd probably get this one right here. So again, I always like to give you resources when I have them. Thank you for joining us today. And Chuck, thank you for being here and being willing to, uh, to film My together. Pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. If you enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up. Go ahead and go to YouTube and subscribe. Share it with your friends. See ya. Thank you for watching.